The next topic we'll be discussing is conductors in electrostatic equilibrium. Uh, electrostatic equilibrium is defined as the situation in which there is no net motion of charge. And that's important, that's the definition. If an, a conductor is in electrostatic equilibrium, there is no net motion of charge. And if there is no net motion of charge, that conductor is in electrostatic equilibrium. Notice this uh, is only for conductors that we're talking here. And uh, when a conductor is in electrostatic equilibrium, meaning the charges are not flowing, a conductor in this state has the following properties. <clears throat> the first property is that the electric field within the substance of the conductor is equal to, this is from the last chapter, so hopefully you'll remember this, the electric field is equal to zero within the substance of the conductor. And if you want a uh, proof of that, uh, if you just uh, click uh, right over there, uh, there's a link right to that spot in the lecture that if you, it's an important thing to review to understand how we know that uh, when a conductor is in electrostatic equilibrium that the electric field is zero within the stuff. It, uh, you can actually have an electric field inside a hollow conductor if there's like a charge suspended in there, but in the substance of a conductor in electrostatic equilibrium, the electric field must be zero. So that's an important property that we're going to base some other things on. I would like to interject here that if a conductor is not in electrostatic equilibrium, there very well may be an electric field within the substance of a conductor. For example, if I take a conducting bar and connect it to a battery, then there will be an electric field within the substance of the conductor, and there will be charges moving within that conductor, just like this. But you must note that there is a net motion of charge within this conductor, hence it is not in electrostatic equilibrium, hence there can be an electric field within this conductor. Uh, next, any net charge on a conductor in electrostatic equilibrium must reside on the surface. Can't be within the substance, it's got to be on the outside, or in a situation of a hollow conductor with a charge in the middle, you could have some charge on the inside surface. Again, it must be on the surface. Also, we will find that the electric field right next to the surface will be sigma over epsilon naught. That is also from last chapter, but we'll prove it with Gauss's law here. And it must be perpendicular to the surface. And in this case, this is actually perpendicular to the surface itself, not perpendicular to the area vector, but literally perpendicular to the surface. The electric field must be directed. And finally, number four is that for uh, irregular conductors of like not a uniform shape, uh, the sigma, the surface charge density, must be greatest where the R of curvature, the radius of curvature, is smallest. Uh, that is, uh, for example, like on a pin head, and we also talked about this last chapter, uh, the surface charge density gets much greater where you have a sharp point. Uh, we'll prove this actually next chapter, we'll prove that. We already showed this uh, in the last chapter, so that was, uh, you can refer to that. Using Gauss's law, I want to prove number two, and I want to prove uh, also number three uh, using Gauss's law. So let's go ahead and start with the fact that the, uh, any net charge must reside on the surface. Here's my proof. What I want to do is I want to take a um, it can be any, any uh, conductor you want, and it's a solid conductor, but I'm going to just make it a spherical conductor. Uh, so this is a spherical conductor. In electrostatic equilibrium. And I'm going to create a Gaussian surface within the conductor, inside the substance of the conductor, but arbitrarily close to the edge. In other words, you can get this as close as you want, and let's just say this is literally right up against that edge, my Gaussian surface that I'm going to create. And uh, you can get closer and closer and closer to the edge of the conductor, but you don't want to be on the outside of the conductor. You want to be within it. So we know, due to Gauss's law, that 
the electric field, uh, the integral of the electric field dotted on dA of that Gaussian surface is just got to be Q in over epsilon naught. Last chapter, I argued that these charges, any charges that were in here, hate each other and they all repel to the outside, which is also true and it makes sense, but I'm actually going to prove it now mathematically that all the charge must be on the surface. So imagine this, maybe this is charge. Maybe it has charge Q on it somehow. Well, what do we know about where that charge has got to be? Well, here we go. What is the field strength on this Gaussian surface, which is within the substance of a conductor? In electrostatic equilibrium. From number one, the E field is zero within the substance of the conductor, and that's where my Gaussian surface is. So I know that everywhere on here, the field is zero. This zeroes out everywhere on that Gaussian surface. So this whole side actually has to be zero. So that means that Q in over epsilon naught has to be zero. That means Q in has to be zero. There can be no charge within that Gaussian surface because the field strength has got to be zero everywhere on the Gaussian surface. And see last chapter again if you want to see why the electric field has to be zero within the substance of that conductor. So all the charge must be outside this. And because I can create this Gaussian surface as arbitrarily close to the edge as I want, that means any charge that's present got to be outside that Gaussian surface. So I just proved using Gauss's law that any charge must be on the surface of the sphere. And it's also true for any shape, because you can create a Gaussian surface any shape you want. It's only useful for determining electric fields if it's a uniform shape, but you can make a Gaussian surface any shape that you want. I'm now going to prove number three. The electric field must be perpendicular. Uh, electric field is perpendicular to the surface of a conductor in electrostatic equilibrium uh, for a charged conductor. So uh, let's just say that this, it doesn't have to be regular. Let's say we have this uh, irregularly shaped conductor. Probably be higher surface charge density over here, higher here, and it spreads out more here. A little bit higher there. I'm making it higher charge density where there's a, uh, a lower radius of curvature. Um, so here is just proof that it's perpendicular. We're, we're going to also prove in a minute that, or a few minutes here, that it's the electric field magnitude sigma over epsilon naught. But for now, let's just prove it's perpendicular. So again, uh, this is only true for charge conductors in electrostatic equilibrium, which I'm going to abbreviate E stat EQ. Electrostatic equilibrium. So let's just say this is in electrostatic equilibrium, meaning there is no net motion of charge. Well, if let's just go ahead and try to uh, assume the converse. In other words, let's assume there is a field that wasn't perpendicular to the surface. Let's say there was a field parallel to the surface any component of field parallel at all like that. If there was, what would this charge right here do? It would accelerate. It would accelerate this way. But that can't be true because this conductor is in electrostatic equilibrium. There's no net motion of charge. Therefore, if it is in electrostatic equilibrium and there is no net motion of charge, the actual field can only be perpendicular. There can be no, there can't be any component. That's a right angle. This is a right angle with that surface. This is a right angle with that surface. There cannot be any component of this electric field. It's going to be hard to draw it in there because it's so small. But everywhere right next to the surface, it's got to be exactly perpendicular. If it wasn't, if there were any component parallel to the surface, the charge would be accelerated. Therefore, by definition of our conductor in electrostatic equilibrium, 
it has to be perpendicular at every point of the surface. All of these components have to be perfectly perpendicular, no component parallel. We will prove that anywhere next to this thing, the electric field is right up next to it, if you measure that, will be sigma over epsilon naught. And sigma is changing here. You can see that sigma is higher right here. It's lower over here. But anywhere on that conductor, as we'll prove, the uh, electric field will be sigma for that point over epsilon naught. We'll do that with Gauss's law in a minute. I need to emphasize that the electric field is only perpendicular to the surface of a conductor in electrostatic equilibrium right next to the surface. And it's only sigma over epsilon naught right next to the surface. As you can see from this diagram, it doesn't have to be perpendicular to the surface when you get farther away from the surface, nor does it have to equal sigma over epsilon naught. As you can see in this example, it's getting weaker as you get farther from the surface. We'll continue these proofs in the next video.